my dream last night. Everything was in slow motion. The river turned into sand. You were preaching for my pain. A beacon swept the sky. City on a pure shining. Caught a greyhound bus. You were next to me when I woke up. One step ahead of the reaper. When the road down to keep from sleeping. Baby, can't you feel like sun just breaking through the clouds with gold? Just a moment. Skip the beat and everything is lit. Away. Out of control, no I'm a reason. Looking everywhere except inside my head. When I realize that I've had enough of crying out to the night, couldn't take another fight. So tough. But somehow, somehow. This is not going to be easy. You already know that. 
We were in the middle of a show, and then everything shuts off. No music, no lights, silence. No, it's not going to be easy. But was it ever? Working behind the scenes has never been easy. On the road, away from family, working under pressure. You know the burden is on you. Being the one that everyone looks to when things go wrong. No, it has never been easy. But only you have the power. A power that comes from teamwork. Only you can bring us back together to forget our worries, to bring us to our feet once again. Only you can make sure that the show goes on. It's not going to be easy, no. That's why the world will need extraordinary people. That's why millions of people will need you again. Now it's your time. The applause will return for you. Get ready to do what we have always done, but this time, like never before. And boom, that's it. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to The Sound and Soul. This is a new show that we are going to be putting to you, hopefully, every month. And what is um, Sound and Soul, basically? It's a informal talks with professionals that work behind the scenes and cameras, but make fantastic shows possible. For us, they are the stars in our show, and we want to hear what they want to say about some matters of the audio and video in the stream. All right. In order to do this, welcome, everybody. I hope uh, everybody is fine and right. Of course, I'm not alone. Behind the wheels, Mr. Eric Albinañas helping us with all the setup and producing this show. And of course, also, I'm not alone because I have right beside me, uh, Mr. Ignacio Chulia, the guy that uh, not only has a degree in law, as an MBA and a master in commercial trade, but overall he got tons of experience on his back as he worked in different sectors before Das Audio, where he finally landed in June 2001. I can somehow confirm his uh, resume as I had shared dozens of trade shows, seminars, and travels with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, here you are, my colleague Ignacio, commonly known as Nacho. Yo. Thank you very much for the presentation. Welcome, everyone. Our today's guest, he's got a vast experience. And of course, we're going to be learning today the way he works, he makes. I'm pretty sure that uh, we're going to get something very interesting uh, from him since uh, perhaps he's got uh, special tricks. But not only we are interested about Al Turash, the sound engineer, but we're also uh, very interested about Alturaj, the person. So we're gonna scratch the surface and we're going to dig in and we're going to get to know Alturaj, generally speaking. Yes, exactly. He's a wonderful guy. We've been together many times, not only in Turkey, but here also. He's a nice guy. I love him to death. He is uh, an international Turkish sound engineer, graduated in the SAE in Austria, actually. He is very experienced in recording and mixing, but also has FOH and monitor. Uh, engineer. He has worked in many different styles of music and performers regularly. He live, uh, He actually now gives lectures at the SAE in Istanbul, and he participated in gigs such as uh, Kodak Theater in LA, Carnegie Hall in New York, or Concert, Concert Boo in Amsterdam. So welcome, everybody, to Alp Turash. 
Oh. Hello, Hi, my friend. Hi, man. Hi. How are you? Fine. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good. So far, let's say. A little bit nervous. This thing reminds me a little bit of my uh, back ages on the radio. I used to be like very, very nervous working and i was not the actually the guy who was talking i was behind the glasses like eric is right now but it's fine i think it's gonna be a nice time um especially within these times right yeah i don't want to mention that thing we are gonna try to avoid it sure but this is a very special times how is for you it's good it's a good opportunity to to do this uh so we can experience what the singers are experiencing, you know, being <laughs> on stage actually, because it's easier for us being a little bit back on the stage and doing our stuff, what we do best, and they should do the performance. And now, you know, this is this is a bit hard. Now we are experiencing what they do actually. <laughs> now we are in the front line, right? Yep. <laughs> How is the weather in Turkey? Where are you actually now? You're in Istanbul? No, no, I moved uh, to Antalya, uh, mm. a south city. You, you guys know, I'm t t telling it for the other guys. Uh, in Antalya, in a small village called Tekirova. I'm living now since four years now here. Uh, I'm, I was going to the gigs from here. Uh, I realized that it has only the distance to the airport. Uh, so, yeah, I moved to Antalya. And it's quite nice here. It's still, the weather is still nice, like 20 degrees in daytime. It should be very similar to Valencia, I guess. That's great. That's great. So, um, Alp, tell me, when it was the first time you actually felt like this is what you want to do for a living? I think that was at the day I set up, set foot into a studio for the first time. I was amazed of what was going on in there to be a part of creating the music, you know, like it was really interesting. The The thing was, I wouldn't say I felt I would do this for a living because I couldn't believe that someone would pay you money for doing this. You know, it was too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, we're going to hang out in the studio and you're going to pay me? Great. You know, like, All right, why not? So I think, yeah, the first moment I was in the studio, I was, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this. That's great. So Stay today... Ready. Today in the Sound and Sold, um, we are going to be talking about different topics, or we were going to try to talk about different topics with different people. But today, with today, um, since you are very experienced in in the three, let's say wedges from uh, for the sound perspective, I like to talk to you about uh, the difference in between mixing in the FOH, in the monitors, and in the um, uh, studio recording right mm. so yeah. do you do, can you give us more or less like a short tip like a an overall let's say experience in between these three different type of uh working in the sound area i started in the studio uh, actually um i like to put it in you know bad guitar players became bass players and bad bass players became audio engineers you know i came <laughs> from that era so <laughs> so i started working in the studio first uh, and then having connections with the singers and uh, bands, I moved slowly to the to the concert area. Uh, and I didn't want to quit one of them, you know, like I really like both being in both of them. They have their own uh, universes, their own uh, environments. Uh, being in a concert is much more rewarding, I would say, at the point of that you are really experiencing what the crowd is experiencing at that moment. You know, it's like very spontaneous it's like you just have the reaction of that sound you do by watching the the audience uh, but it's more raw i would say uh, you don't have too much detail as you would have in the studio so the studio is more detailed for me you have more time in your hands you have an undo button which is mm. incredible you know <laughs> you do something wrong you say undo you say sorry get a coffee go on you know like which you don't have in this in the in the concert area uh, most so of people we wish to have it i would love to have it you know like <laughs> so many times hold on uh, yeah <laughs> uh, yeah they have both their pros and cons i would say but uh, i never wanted to let one of them go they are both like very equal uh dear to me that's great that's great um i also think that the studio recording is probably more a personal task, right? When you feel a little bit more yourself against the 
all the the uh, the trucks that you have to you can put also a little bit of more personal touch maybe inside the studio life is more of like a, a fighting between not failing and make it you know good totally yeah that's, that's and uh, and also probably in the life the adrenaline is a lot more involved into these uh, because like you said you see 60,000 people jumping around you so you are part of that party let's say but you don't have to so it's very complicated actually to be in the middle so yeah nacho yeah actually i'm here uh, i want to say that you know we have had the pleasure to join you all for a few times and to me you are somehow unique okay you've got something uh so actually uh you know when i think about you uh it it actually it reminds me for instance of john Berko who is the person mm. that was before the president of the House Parliament. You know, he became very famous as from his famous order, order, you know. So, and he was very unique. Nobody knew this person, you know, before that. So during your experience, when you've been working, you know, with so many people, I've read your resume, you've got a vast experience. Have you ever noticed anything in particular from the people you have worked with, anything significant that you could tell us? from any, any other sound engineers? Well, uh, working with other sound engineers is fun, actually, for me, because uh, you think at one point that everybody does the job as you do. You know, after one point, you got your certain way to do stuff. And whenever I work with some other engineer, uh, side by side or front of house monitor, and then you see other tips they are doing that you never have thought of, actually. Uh, it opens your mind, so it's it's really fun. And in our work offline, you don't actually. I don't go too much to concerts to watch concerts, you know, like or to listen to a concert. It's more like we do the gigs. I do like before this thing. I was doing let's say uh, around ninety to a hundred gigs a year. So there is no time to go to a concert. So you cannot experience what other engineers do too much. So to work with the engineer is is the only time that you actually uh, can watch and learn. So. I've learned a lot probably from other engineers working with them uh, rather than in school or or uh, on my own uh, experiencing. Mm. To become a sound engineer, did you make any studies? Did you went to some, you know, I don't know, school of sound or something like that? Yeah, I started as an assistant engineer in a studio and uh, there were no schools in Turkey at that time. It was 1994 or something. Uh, and then I... I, I, I'm half German, so I know German as well. So I went, I looked for a school in Germany or in Austria. So I went to Vienna, uh, to Austria, and I studied at the SAE, School of Audio Engineering over there for a year. And then I came back. And then uh, years later, the SAE opened a branch in Istanbul too. So I taught there for a while. Can yeah, you explain a little bit to the people that doesn't know who is SAE, what it is? Uh, it's a School of Audio Engineering, as the name uh, explains itself. It's Austria. It's it's from Aust not from Austria, but from Australia actually. But I went mm. to Austria, so you were right on that one. Uh, so it teaches actually studio centered audio engineering mostly, uh, and live is another story for them. And actually, I remember like uh, there was a teacher who came for a couple of times for teaching live, and he was he said, I mean, forget whatever you learned here about studio. If you are going to do live, go to a company live company and start working there that's the way you learn actually live you mm. know, it's you learn from experience uh, it's it's much more different than the studio he, he explains uh, which i uh, actually i think he's right on the live world there are two moments let's say two places where you can work right with it being in the front of the stage or being inside a stage yeah. what you will see like your preferred one and be honest <laughs> okay the only thing i don't like is doing front of house and monitor at the same time from the same oh. console <laughs> that's, I heard. that i don't want to do you know that's if I, if I have to i will but usually i don't um yeah my favorite position is front of house i guess i like front of house more um it's a bit a lonely place uh, if you, do, you are working with the same band for years, you are getting a little bit bored because you know every note that's going to be played, you know every joke that's going to happen in, on stage. Mm. 
uh, monitor is much more fun because you are with the guys then, you know, like actually, actually. Uh, but you have more artistic input in front of us. So I think I like more front of us. Uh, you, I think on the technical point of view, actually, when you are on the FOH, you're just mixing left, left and right. Probably yeah. that's it. On the monitor world, you are mixing several small PAs. So it makes it a little bit more complex. And let's, let's say this is a sound engineer talk. So let's say the things. Uh, working with musicians sometimes is a little bit a little bit hard. You have to have 50% of technical knowledge and 50% of psychology knowledge in order to make the musicians to feel comfortable with the monitor, with the mix, you have to sort of be like their friend more than a, a, than a worker besides them. Yeah, totally. I agree. I mean, it's, it is, as you said, I mean, 50% is you were being nice. 50% <laughs> is, I think, <laughs> uh, you have to be their friends. You have to be a part of the band and you have to be 100% there at, that, at the show. I mean, uh, you have to feel the stress they are feeling at the same time. Otherwise, you won't be able to put yourself 100% in. That's that's uh, a very good thing to do, actually, and it's very complicated to do. It's like, um, since you are aware of what you're doing, it's the different, um, the, the sound, it, it has the taste on it, right? So it's very difficult sometimes to understand what the musician actually wants what he actually needs to be comfortable mix, uh, playing. So it's very complicated to get into their heads, actually, and just think what they think and try to give them what they need. It's very complicated. It is. You have to have a... I think it's a good thing that you have a code with the musicians so they don't go like, Dar, up, you know, like... Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like small movements... Uh, would be great. I, I I had a band I was working with, uh, Shebnam Ferah. At the band, whenever someone makes like this, this means vocal for them. If the lead singer makes like this, that meant delay to her. And if the bass player makes like this, it means hi-hat to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to keep those all everything in mind. Otherwise, you're going to get, get lost in the in, in, in translation, actually. Right. But... Yeah, and you have to be friends with them and you have to ex exactly know what they like to hear and how they express themselves, how they feel it that day. Um, everybody has their ups and downs. You cannot have your up and down. You have to be like 100% there. 100% all the time. The time. That's true. You can, yeah, yeah. So you had your own language with them? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was taking notes, actually. I I, I mean, I uh, till I learned what they meant, I, I had a notepad uh, putting on the com console and... Whenever someone makes a number, something like two means reverb, three means keyboard kind of things. When someone goes like two up, then you go like up, oh, reverb up, you know, like that kind of stuff. So it helped a lot to me, actually. Otherwise, you go like what? And they go like reverb, you know, it's mm. very unprofessional. I actually, think we should be invisible on stage. That's that's the best thing. I mean, the, the, the audience shouldn't even understand that there's an engineer. They should think this whole magic happens at, at that time by itself, you know, like. That's why I don't even like that uh, they announce me in the concerts, like we have blah, blah in, on the monitors or in the front of house. It's like, we don't exist, you know, like we exist. Uh, we, it should be invisible. Let, let, let me actually connect uh, what you're saying now about invisible with my next question. Because for, for instance, I'm here in this industry for 20 years, okay? And, but only lately, but you will correct me because of course you've got more experience. Uh, let's say for the last five years or more, I've been hearing about cardioid configuration, okay? Mm. So uh, what is your experience about cardioid and configuration and about canceling the pollution that is generated around the stage? Because everybody is friendly with that, but some of them, they just want to remove, you know, that the energy which is created there. What's your position? I think the option to be able to cancel the bass the sub from stage is great uh being not be able to to play with that that would uh, affect the concert because if there's too much bass on stage uh, as we know uh, the, the musicians are going to get uh, frustrated and they won't be able to perform as they like so cleaning up the stage from that bass is okay i think i like it the thing is that you cannot use the that configuration in every venue as planned uh, 
for example, we do in the summers in Turkey a lot of amphitheater theater concerts, uh, and the the format of the places are that you cannot put the sub bases as you like them to, or as they demand you to uh, to cancel the bases. So it's a problem. It's, it doesn't work all the time. You have to have good conditions, like always, eighty or ninety percent of the conditions have to met that you can cancel out the sub stage as as uh, as being uh, wanted. Uh, but it, if you come to the question, yeah, I, li I really like the idea of that you can cancel some of the sounds from the sound out of the out of the uh, stage. There's two things I'd like to mention when we do seminars for training, when we talk about subwoofers, and it's like uh, for the sound engineers, they must understand, uh, they must learn two things. First of all is how to do it, all right, how to create a correct cardio configuration of subwoofers. But the most important thing is you have to learn when to use it mm. because it doesn't make any sense to make a cardioid and lose energy on a DJ play for example, or a rock and roll band, most of the time you need that noise. You need that, that you know, the, the all the energy that goes back from the subwoofers. Um, so I always try to tell the people, you have to learn not only how to make them, but if you need them. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Because right. we have to agree that for creating cardio, you are losing energy in the front of the stage. So you have to put in the balance. Do I need to do it? Do I have to do it? You're right. Uh, otherwise, you have to you start trying to convince the band that no, no, there's enough bass outside. You know, like <laughs> trying to explain them, and then they start coming out and listen, and then it's all of uh, waste of time. You're right. If the bass is needed in the in stage, then then you should not use it. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Um. Since we are talking about when you need to use the cardio or not, um, the folklore music or let's say local music always have some tips very different from normal band tunings. Like, for example, you know, uh, especially um, I think that for the people who uh, sometime listen to the Turkish type of music. Um, it is a very diff I think it's a very I never mix one band, but I think it's a very difficult uh, type of music to mix. Do you have some tips for doing that? Uh, yeah, I mean you're right about that. Uh, Turkish instruments, or I think any ethnic instrument, are are uh, difficult to mix in live situations because mostly they have hollow bodies, and they have very little uh, volume, so you have to amplify the volume without getting them into feedback mm. which is which is a problem uh, i try to use two mics uh two input sources let's say one microphone and one um click on or or a, or a, or a mic that you can stick on, on the on the instrument so you can take the resonance out uh, that usually sounds really bad but it doesn't feedback so you have mm. you have a solid sound that you can work on actually then you can eq it out or put a lot of reverb on it and then you can put the mic that you actually use uh, as a flavor on it let's say and not put it too much out so you don't get um too many too many feedback i would say connected with uh, what joel is saying about uh, turkey uh how would you describe the evolution of the Turkish music uh, since the, let's say, early 80s up to date. Because, you know, uh, I have experience in Turkey. I have attended several concerts and it's so diverse. Like it's the folklore, but at the same time, you know, all, all type of musics are there. But I believe that a few years ago, it wasn't like it is nowadays. What can you tell us about that? Um, 80s would be a good point to start about the history of Turkish music uh, because I would say Turkish pop music really evolved at that time starting from the 80s uh, going through the 90s uh, there were very little um, space for other kind of music there were only Turkish pop music I would say and Turkish folk music for a long time in the 90s so uh, no rock, rock. in the 90s rock started very heavily up to the mid 2000s I would say it was like it, 
it was like all, all, all uh, almost like mainstream. It was really there, rock. So, Alp, am I wrong if I say that, let's say that the number of subwoofers that, you know, Turkey has been adding, uh, you know, it's been according also to this evolution in your music. Namely, uh, nowadays, get... not because nowadays you use, you know, uh, same, uh, type, uh, same number of subwoofers as, you know, doesn't matter whether there is a uh, same concert in, in Russia or in other places that before was uh, less needed the subwoofer. Yeah, totally. I mean, subwoofers were, are helping a lot that you can actually reduce the main volume. I think that's that's the point with the subwoofers. If you have enough subs, you don't have to push the the other the rest of the frequency band too much because it's making people more whole. They feel there's as there are there is more music, there is more volume. I would say so. Uh, the use of subwoofers and that we have more control on the subs now uh, helped us to reduce the main volume. Uh, we were maybe pushing the volume up to 100, 600, 8 dBs, 110 dBs maybe. Now we don't have to push that much. It's like with, with 100 dB, you got the same fullness in the music now. Uh, so I think uh, in the whole world, it's it's the thing now that the subs are actually, uh, the evolving of the subs helped a lot uh, about volume management. I agree 100%. I think these subwoofers now are changing so much delivering a lot more pressure but cleaner and controlling the dispersion of them by a, I don't know different um, setups of the subwoofer the sound engineers are learning to control actually and is a very important part of the uh, frequency range because the subwoofer is the one who gives you the reality that you are on a concert so yeah. imagine a, a concert without subwoofer it doesn't give you that that uh, feeling right yeah, I mean, it, because you can have very nice, clear music in your headphones or in your home stereo or in your car, but yeah, that amount of sub, you can only have with a lot of power and you need space and you need power for that. Back to the first question, to the first question, sorry. Um, I think this is also related because the amount of pressure of the uh, of the music that you are receiving, right? In terms of energy, let's say, working on a studio where you can be calm maybe you know put the music down a little bit not so much noise but on the uh, festivals for example you have to mix very loud yes or yes so it's actually i think again the most stressful part in between the three is the monitor world where there is a lot of noise and you can't be apart from it it's like you have to be right in the middle of the noise so um, I'm betting on the monitor world again to be like one of the most uh, difficult parts of in our in our sound, uh, let's say, career. I agree. The monitors are are the most hard part, and yeah, you are standing literally like two meters behind the PA. There, there will be a lot of uh, fold, folding back, and there will be a lot of noise. But the in-ear monitoring world is helping that a lot right now. I mean, I'm I'm much more comfortable to work with in-ear monitors on stage mm. rather than regular big monitors now. Yeah, that's true. Well, and the this is not so new, but the use of digital mixes also help a lot to them, especially to the monitor guy, yeah. where he can have several uh, memories saved, let's say, and and he can recall just with a simple yeah. click on it. And it saved a lot on the sound check time, obviously. True, yeah. Um, talking about gigs, did you remember the worst one? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it 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 was a, uh, a, I would say a classical gig with with narrators. There were uh, four ladies running around with headphone microphones and telling stories and reading poems. Uh, it was more like a theatrical piece. It was a 4,000 people uh, venue, closed venue, and I had delay speakers, obviously, at some point. Oh, funny. But I was the only engineer, so I, I was doing front of house and monitors. And uh, I asked the system guys, because they were fixed, fixed uh, delay towers at the back. So I asked them, 
are those things uh, connected? They said, yes. I said, are they delayed? How much day should I put on? They said, no, no, they are, they are not delayed, they say. So I measured it up. It was like something around uh, 35 meters or so. I, de- I measured it up and I put some delays on them. Mm-hmm. And I didn't go and check. Uh, I sent the guys. They went up and they said, well, oh, it's okay. Because I couldn't leave the desk, you know. And after the concert, I had a queue, man, in front of me, like, people coming and complaining and you know like well, we couldn't hear really? anything we didn't understand anything it was the worst show ever and you know like i could, i didn't know what to say I, I was really sorry and then i found out those speakers were delayed actually and, and i added delay again on them. oh okay so people didn't hear anything they didn't understand the words obviously and it was about poems and theatrical so it was like really bad i mean maybe like three four hundred people at the back they didn't get anything from the show if I could, I would pay them back, man. It was, it was really, really <laughs> horrible. So, so Al, so, so you're yeah. saying that you actually noticed that you were having especially your best day since you have a queue of people like a, a putting and claiming on you. So what do you do to us? You know, you just ruin our best day. Yeah. So, but in your case, what would be the opposite? So you just uh, felt that you had a good day, a good job, and you, you, you made a good job. What would be the opposite sign of that? It, that happens too. I mean, sometimes you you know uh, you do you do a concert. The concert is done, and then you are just you know cleaning up, and people are passing by you, and you come out, you have eye contact, and they go like thank you, you know, like and then then you feel they know what I do, and they come they on. Like I, I believe that it's more than eye contact. Shaking hands, give me five, <laughs> sign me here. Don't be modest. Sign, yeah, sign me here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, no, no signing. But yeah, we there, there there has been concerts that we got like uh, applause and that they liked the concert and then you feel good. I I mean my favorite concert I guess I would say it was with a small band called Doctor Opin in in Crete in Greece. I did a concert and uh, we it was a pre-show to a bigger band which I don't remember who it was, but I I felt very good on that concert and everybody was very happy and after the show people came and thanked and that i think that was the highlights that concert of my whole career i really liked it that's I great it. <laughs> yeah. it's great when people comes actually come and, and tell you the the uh the, the feedback that they have from yeah. the mixing point of view that doesn't happen too often it's not that we don't need it because or we don't need the applauses maybe but that what we do need to know is how they feeling right because we know that there are some things that people um, sometimes don't, don't understand. It's like we know that the people doesn't go to listen to music. They go to have feelings, right? They go there because um, there are some people that actually spend the night before on the streets, um, you know, having cold night or even rain or whatever, because they are waiting so much to see the band perform at the next day. And we can ruin that. With a simple yeah. wrong button, with a simple wrong uh, mic setup, with a simple wrong system setup, we can ruin that. It happened to me one time. Um, I was saying that out loud on the on the seminars for several years, but uh, and it never happened to me until it happened to me. It's like, well, I was telling I was telling the truth actually. It happened to me when um, I'm not gonna say the band just in case. Maybe the sound engineer will be in the show in the future, but um, it it is my favorite band. And I went to the concert that was in Madrid. Very, very weird because, uh, you know, like you said before, we sound engineers mostly never attend to some uh, concerts because we don't have time. But um, I was waiting for to see that band for 15 years. And at the day that I was able to go, actually, I went there and it was so bad mix and the system so well, so bad tuned. Uh, they didn't have front fields, so they didn't have um, subwoofers, only flown subwoofers, not subwoofers on the floor. And it's a very rock and roll band. So um, I actually went up before the show end. I went home. Very frustrated, actually. So it is very important, actually. We take we take that into account when we are working, right? It's not only that we are mixing a band. We are just keeping the people to probably have a, a great day or a great experience in their lives. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's That's why I was telling about that we should be invisible. If everything is fine, then we are invisible. Nobody notices you. That's good. You no, know, that means the show is flowing, actually. If someone starts noticing you, like, 
where's the sound guy? You know, that kind of stuff that's 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 usually not good. So <laughs> yeah, but I'm, this is yeah. this is also a teamwork. I mean, now 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 you're talking, let's say, from your side as as an FOH, but also the artist or or the band, they also have something to do. For instance, out now. Let's just imagine that we put you in the time machine and we could go back in years and I give you the opportunity to mix in either Michael Jackson or David Bowie. Mm. Which one would you choose and why? Uh, okay, which one pays how much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, would, Michael's uh, pocket I, was full. I would uh, go for David Bowie, I guess. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Can you tell us why? I'm more, uh, I enjoy more concerts than shows, let's say. I mean, I'm not into too much dancers and lightnings and lasers and that kind of stuff. I'm not very keen to it. It doesn't affect me too much. So Michael Jackson is a great musician and the uh, songwriter he was and a performer. It was more like a show thing, what he was doing. David Bowie is, I think, for me more more like a musician's band i would i would say so that would be interesting more i guess hmm. i i also i also agree I, I i just wanna you know i was just thinking about last time i saw the michael jackson documentary this is it and mm. actually That's a good one. so perfectionist like i actually was kind of a tricky to work with him you know because he was actually he was really claiming you know the whole time put it like this put it like that and it was not that easy yeah, of at course. At point, the end, the result was perfect, yeah, but you need to I see remember, what was happening yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, at one point he goes to the monitor guy, and he has in his in his like, in his eyes. He goes like, "There's something is like, yeah, a punch is coming in through my ear." You know, like right. That's Try to understand punch. that. Yeah, what does this <laughs> mean now? What what's a punch <laughs> like? Should I go up or down? You know, you want more or less? You know, yeah, that, that would, yeah, that kind of stuff is hard. Any, anyhow, I think, right, exactly. Anyhow, I think both shows must be a, a very a great experience for the people who actually did it. Um, I never saw Michael Jackson live, and that's one of the things that it's, you know, the most things that I regret on it because I had the opportunity one day. Oh. And, and I took it off to do a gig, which it was actually a very boring gig. So in the middle of the show, I was like, what, what should I do? What I did? What I did? When I saw the documentary, um, I saw it in a big room with very nice speakers. And I was like, this is what I miss. Yeah. And I was like completely, you know, 100% regret about it. Yeah. Um, do you think um, of an instrument that is very, very difficult to mix? Yeah, I mean, as we have talked, et ethnic all ethnic instruments are really hard, I guess, uh, especially on stage. Um, instruments which have little volume and they they tend to feedback easier. That those things are hard. Um, microphones that uh, demands to be used with condenser microphones are hard. I would mm. say. Like if you have a string section, for example, in a rock and roll band, uh, that's that's hard. I would say that those things stress me out a lot. Um, choirs are stressing me a lot. If you have a like a twenty person choir in a band again, in a pop band, hmm. uh, that's those those things are are hard because you have to make them feel comfortable as well. They have to hear themselves nicely and clearly and plus you have to mix them out uh, in a loud environment that's those those so those, it's a bit uh, of, of it's a bit of a compromise yeah. you have to you have to please everyone that's very difficult and look uh going back again to recent technology so before we were talking about cardioid and you know in recent years uh, a lot of speakers manufacturers have been uh adding fir filters to uh, loudspeakers, uh, processors, and DSP-based amplifiers. What are your thoughts about the FIR filters? I think uh, fear filters and DSPs, they, they helped a lot uh, by setting up the system, especially. It's, it's, for, it's, easy, it's an easier job for system engineers and for engineers as myself, who are not system engineers, but 
front of house engineers and we have to from time to time we have to do some system engineering work as well uh, with those systems it's easier now actually and i love the idea actually that the manufacturer puts everything in the same box so i don't have to connect them one by one mm. uh, so dsps uh, or active speakers or fire filters they uh, they help you so you have less connection to do and less connection means uh less less errors actually because if you have to put an external dsp external crossover filters for every speaker there have to be cables in between them any cable can make give you a problem so this uh condensed systems are actually uh more safer for me and you know you guys know better you have to carry them around uh, hmm. so if if it's like packaged well by the manufacturer i think they are more safe for traveling too yeah that's true there's always a mix in between in a in a big fight in the engineer department talking from a manufacturer perspective uh the fight of try to make this system like very easy to use but at the same time you have to give them the tools to make it better right so i think with in the case of the fear filters i think we are just in the beginning of even if we are using them for years for years now i think we are just the beginning of how much potential we can actually put into this um and the the, capa the capabilities of the uh, f the fear filters are, are huge we are trying now i mean we're having from the out of 20 from the out of 40 uh years we are able to actually use fir filters to move the sound without moving the speaker but that technology yeah. to be able to put it in the market and to the normal people say like let's use it it was very complicated we actually tend to you know get into a point where it's actually pretty easy to use but it's it's it was probably the very difficult part of designing um the same it was the um the uh, the user interface where you have to be able to the people that they are going to use a very complicated technology but they but it has to be easy to use so it's like yeah send a rocket to the moon but only with two be buttons you know yeah but once you demonstrate they become believers because actually we had an experience for instance joe you and i not so long ago we were together in Ukraine and uh, we were able to demonstrate how easy it is to focus the energy only where it is needed. And that was a very good argument for people to realize that fear filters really help and they are really useful. Yeah, that's true. We have some new technologies now that I can, I'm, I, I'm not allowed to talk, sorry. <laughs> but I think... I think in the near future, uh, you'll be surprised with the things that we are doing with fear filters. It is very, very nice to actually put the sound where you need it and take it off when you don't. To avoid reflections, to avoid empty zones, to avoid... It, it gives the um, ability for the sound engineer to mix the band and to have exactly the same response in the whole area. So I think that's is a very near future is just about to come and it's going to be very interesting to follow in it yeah I, um, I, i've been in the demo one of your demos like one or two years ago where we played on the fair filters mm -hmm. uh it was pretty incredible uh to watch what you can do with those things uh the, how, how much uh change you can apply to the front of house from where you just st stand without bringing the whole thing down and up it's it's really because you know it changes a lot you do your sound check and then people come in everything changes suddenly they decide to open a couple of more um seats up there which you haven't calculated and yeah, yeah and that kind of stuff helps a lot at that point yeah it is very important um talking about these where we all that, that's another fight in between the manufacturer point of view um self-powered cabinets or um, outside powered cabinets, let's say external amplifier. Um, one of the problems that we have with that is that when you give the option to the people to use their own DSPs and their own amplifiers, they also use their own setups. And sometimes people don't understand that, don't take me wrong on these, but sometimes people don't understand how much um, technology there is in a company as the Saudi, for example, in the engineer department. There are some very expensive tools that you cannot 
have those at home. So of course the the factory presets will be always much better in terms of use for the speaker itself than the ones that you can uh, probably do at your home. You think that the the factory presets are overrated? I do not. I I, I even in plugins I like to use factory presets at least as a starting point. Exactly. Uh, I, I usually use a factory preset for start something up and then I change uh, according to the environment, acoustic or sound or speaker, whatever. But uh, as you said, I, I have believe in the manufacturer mostly. And if they have measured their system that way and if they believe it's going to work that way, I'll start at least from that point and then I'll try to make some changes as I like them. Yeah, of course. I mean, you have to. <clears throat> That's why they... The idea of being a sound engineer is to give your personal touch. The so if you are able to do it, okay. But um, I agree that we should respect what the factory presets. I'm not talking about ours. I'm, I'm talking about everybody. Um, um, sometimes uh, I see the people very convinced that their presets are actually better of um, of what the f the guy who created the equipment uh, did, and it's very hard to communicate that without touching the ego you know it's very complicated yeah yes that's 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 kind of that's kind of hard <laughs> yeah uh, listen alp um yeah i know that you're not very fond of djs however uh either you like them very much or not djs are present uh, in the actual scene so uh, what can you tell us about the DJs in, in Turkey? Because also from my experience, I have noticed that, you know, DJs are more and more occupying a space, you know, in the audio industry, especially also in the live events. What's your opinion about that? Uh, very into DJ music and DJ events, I would say, uh, but time to time, um, Mostly after our gigs, we fin when we finish a gig, then the DJ sets in. Then, uh, yeah, we, we cross paths, at let's say, at some point. Um, the thing is, I think there it comes actually those setup things that's important. For example, if I set my system up for a mostly acoustic concert and the whole speakers and su sub system is working that way, uh, and we make a nice concert, everything works fine. And after that, a DJ comes in. Then you have actually, you have to change actually the whole uh, PA system according to their loud sounds. That's true, uh, yeah. That's, that's, that, that kind of stuff is really hard because other in that point, they start, you know, like pushing uh, the knobs too much. And they, I don't know why, they, they, have, they have this tendency of seeing peaks all the time on their consoles. They want to see those peaks somehow. And they work in a very small dynamic range, actually, like, maximum 10 dBs maybe what, what they are working in. <laughs> so in that way, we should have at least a second uh, PA setting for the DJ so they don't blow the whole system up or at least mm. that everybody goes happy because I understand there is a demand for that and the sound has to be m meet the demand. Yeah, uh, It's not my sound. I don't like to mess it too much uh, with it, but uh, yeah, it's more... A burden to the system engineer, I guess, at that point. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe it's me, uh, but again, you know, uh, uh, from, let's say, years back to now, I have noticed about the size and the type of monitors DJs are using. Because from my early days, I recall that they were carrying just, you know, kind of a small speakers. And nowadays... You had a look at, at what they're using, and they have, you know, an amazing, massive, you know, speakers uh, <laughs> around them. Yeah. So, how, what's what's your opinion about that? What, what do you think? They they should use in ear monitors. <laughs> That's what I think. In ear. <laughs> no, I mean, well, before yeah, they I mean, was using headphones only. That's it. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, the thing is that <clears> they are uh, they are experiencing too many too much loud music as well at stage to to meet the. Uh, the, the to meet the ambience of the of the people, let's say, and as as you you guys just said, if you cancel the subs out from the stage, they start thinking that there's no subs. Exactly. So they they mm. start you know like really pushing up on the subs on their own little poor 15 inch or 12 inch monitors, which 
won't help them at all. So, so cardioid, it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So cardioid is not in in their vocabulary. It should not be actually because they want <laughs> to hear the subs, and if they are, they are performers. So we should uh, react to them as musicians. They want, if they want really mm -hmm. subs on stage, they should be able to hear the subs on stage. So yeah, in that in that terms, there, there should they shouldn't be using any cardioids. That's true. You know, that happened yeah. to me actually one. They don't one use two uh, times. vinyl too much anyway. So vinyls were jumping <clears throat> from the car, from the subs. I can remember uh, in the early True. days, but now True. it's more digital anyway. So yeah. there's also a thing that is called trend. Since a, a DJ started to have like this small line array setup, like a like a monitor, and he is a famous guy, so the rest of the guys wants to have the same thing. But let's be honest, they don't need that much. It's actually uh, harmful for themselves. Most of DJs has a problem with the uh, hearing problems because because of that uh, um, amount of energy that they put so close to them. They probably don't know that the system that they are using has a monitors that are designed to th um, to throw the sound 60 meters away. And they have like one meter uh, from <laughs> their ears and are very loud. Uh, I remember, well, actually this was uh, in Turkey when we did... Um, I'm not going to name him. Uh, you was there, uh, Nacho, also. Mm, we was testing the uh, the uh, the monitors that we created for, especially for, for DJs. And yeah. in one moment of the gig, I decided to go to the stage and try to be hidden, but see or ask him if he was okay with the with the system because it was br brand new for uh, from the first time I think we used them and also uh, of course it wasn't on his rider so I called the, the engineer and I told him look I'm going to use this if you agreed um, I'm going to have what you asking in the rider set it up right there so if he's not happy we will ex exchange one system per the other okay so don't worry and in one moment, I decided to go to see if um, he was happy with the sound. And believe me, um, when I saw the clipping lead on that system, because I was working with the system with Javier uh, the, during the design. So, and during the design, no, during the, the uh, setup for the EQing, right? And I remember that it was very hard actually to make in clip, very hard. It's like scaring hard to, to make them clip. Um, we was using ear protections to make them clip to make how much you can push it and you need to push them, right? Um, and I went there and I saw the clip led like almost constantly open. So I, of course I turn around and I said like, I will ask him after the gig, you know, not, not, not now. It's very, it's very dangerous for them. Probably somebody wants to, you know, need to explain that to them. <laughs> I, I want to say a couple of things about that actually, Joe. Because, you know, I have experience of talking to DJs right after they have finished their show. Uh, and the, the next 30 minutes, what we're using mostly is the body language. So we move a lot of our hands. Cool. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> and, and whenever I'm trying to address any speech to them, I'm aiming at them. They, they turn around. They say, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Because they are completely deaf. So, yeah. yeah. We know yes. about it. still still I do not I don't deny or reject DJs. I love DJs. And you know, if you ask out there, a lot of people would like to become a DJ. You know, we are there are many thousands of uh amateur DJs out there. Mm. So all right, so different. Um let's move on to yeah. the next part of the show where I'm gonna be asking you questions that you have to answer like very quick all right because okay. the time we are going to try to have like the real answer for the question all right so here we are <music> to a band benefit better drummer or better bass player better drummer Female or male singer? Careful with female, this. One. Female, 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 female. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's imagine that the band doesn't have uh, this 
next items, okay? But due to the new tool cashier, let's say they have they have more money, um, you are the one who can actually choose what to add. So what you will choose to add, coir or precautions? If they have too much money, they should give it to me. That's first. Come <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, coir and percussion, that's really hard. Per- percussion, yeah. That's All right. FOH. FOH or monitors? FOH. Pizza or burger? Ooh, pizza. Early mornings or late nights? That's going to be shocker. Early mornings. Isel or window seat? Isel. Oh, we used to fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I actually prefer, I, I don't care if, if it's a window or Isel, but please don't put me in the middle. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Um, uh, the Party, Peter Sellers. Mm, I didn't saw that one. Mine too. Yeah. Mine too. Do yeah. Do you keep cassette players? Uh, no tapes. As soon no, as oh. CD came out, uh, I throw them all away. I hate cassettes, man. I'm 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 more a digital guy, I guess. <laughs> Best album ever. Dark Side of the Moon. Agree. What's your motto? My motto. Um, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> that's my motto <laughs> what superpower you like to have what kind of what superpower, superpower. another one um, oh. uh, I would be I don't know super smart maybe that's, that's good um, after work whiskey or water or beer mm, coffee alright working clothes hoodie sweater or polo well, hoodie of course do you care Before about musicians? I... Sorry. Do you do you care about musicians' preferences or you fly solo? Uh, musician preferences, obviously. What will be a success uh, in your career? A success in my career. Well, for this time, I think to to live another day would be great. Hmm. <laughs> Consoles. Are you picky on this matter? No, not too much. I mean, I can use most of the consoles I've been asked to. Audio or video? Audio. Video walls. Distraction or attraction? Distraction. At home, what audio system do you have? Surround system or stereo system or nothing? I have a little Samsung sound bar. It's like a sound, it's kind of like a surround system, and I have my own those monitors here. Uh huh. What's your favorite type of music? Uh, rock. Before a show, do you have any ritual? I go pee. <laughs> <laughs> Car or motorbike? Go. Motorcycle. Uh, any favorite social network? Um, it changes now. Twitter, I guess, these days. All right. Um, and to finish, um, what's your current mood? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I missed you guys. It's it's been good to see you guys. But it was March, I guess, when I last saw you, huh? In Valencia. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Actually, that was our last uh, flight. That that was the last plane that I took. Um, uh, and being a guy that used to travel, <laughs> plus the two hundred days uh, a year, it's it's a very unique moment. Yes, I remember. We had a great show. Actually, it was a lot of people there for several days. Um. What is that? <laughs> yeah, ah, all movie. right. A movie. Well, I should watch it tonight, I guess. Actually, I never saw that. I'm going to search for it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, all right. I'll, not your um, to finish, so let's say that in between mixing the FOH, the monitors, or on a studio, choose the one that if you have to choose for the rest of your life and try to explain why. This, this this has changed recently. I would say front of house, uh, and I did so actually. I was doing less and less studio mixing, uh, and I was doing more front of house mixing. Uh, I liked it a lot. As I said, it's more rewarding uh, at the point. Uh, you can still, you know, like you visit places, which is nice too. But now in this current situation, I started back going back to uh, studio mixing which is okay too so you are in the comfort of in your own house you can mix online so as you see i'm not choosing again <laughs> <laughs> i want to keep both of them <laughs> if possible 
All right. We're not going to take more of your time. Thank you very much to be here. You, uh, Nacho, if you want to say some last words for, for Alp. Well, I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious. Alp, are you superstitious? I think no, not at all. Okay. Okay. I think so, being superstitious has, uh, it brings you bad luck. <laughs> all right. I don't believe in that either. <laughs> Ah, do, we we have some material actually. That, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. Stay there. Oh yeah, because we do have some material actually that you sent to us, and we want to probably share them, uh, which are pictures of your job. Oh, exactly. okay, that's true. Yeah, let's go, let's go there and let's see some photos. Yes, please. <laughs> So our friend Eric will put uh, a couple of pictures and let's see what's, what we have here. What's that? Oh, okay. This is the first Midas Pro 6 in Turkey. It's been like more ten year, more than 10 years, I guess. So uh, we were doing a show and they brought it in. So we were doing sound checks on that, trying to figure out how it works. So I was really <laughs> happy, you know, like to touch it. Ooh, it's Midas Pro 6 for the first time. Yeah. That's a good piece of gear, actually. Yeah, that's a good piece. It's, it's, it's a great console. I really like it. Oh, okay. Studio. Here we have a, a young yeah. version of you. There's a, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> young been, version. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been 10 years too. Uh, this is the Rupert Neve uh, 5088. Nice. Uh, this, what, this is the studio that I was um, mixing in and I was uh, managing it with two other partners. And uh, the engineer is Zeynep, a friend of ours. She, she, she was uh, working on the console. It was fun. I was doing gigs and uh, studio managing at the same time at that time. Yeah. For the people who doesn't know, the guy on the right on the bottom is a bass player. Yeah. They also exist. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Next. Oh. Yeah. Good old days. That's that's that used to be the biggest uh, touring event in Turkey. It was, as you can see, sponsored by Fanta. Uh, mm -hmm. doing like 15 to 20 gigs uh, in one month, uh, touring all Turkey and going to little places, any places that uh, wouldn't have any concerts. Oh, that's me. Oh, my Can we? Okay. <laughs> what, is, what is Wally? <laughs> You're all alone, man. Yeah, I'm alone, man. Really Where's the lighting? Living. Where's the light? Oh, it's the day. Yeah, okay. They don't... The lighting guy is up, upstairs, actually. It, 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 this was like a... a Ah, it's a two floor. A, a higher construction, yeah. Hmm, production guys hate that. I love it. But production uh, audience guys hate it. Uh, audience hate it too. At the back, nobody sees anything. So, you know, like. Yeah, that's true. But we are a lot more comfortable there. Yeah. And it's a great place to put a portable toilet at that time. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Next. Ooh. Send I... nude. It Ooh, looks on the beach. Okay. Where are you? Oh, this is a very special place, I would say, to have concerts. Now it's cancelled, though. Uh, it's in Istanbul. Uh, it's on the Bosphorus. The, the sea the Bosphorus. that you see behind is actually the Bosphorus. So I'm standing mm -hmm. at the European side of the city, and the, the other side is Asia at that point. So it's really where the continents meet kind of thing. And we were doing a lot of concerts at that point. It was a big car park where we could do concerts. But it's too much in the middle of the city, and after a while... Uh, people started complaining about volume, so they stopped doing mm. concerts over there. Oops. That's yeah. a PM5D RH. Right? Yeah. I love that mixing board. It's it's nice, yeah. yeah I mean, Yamaha went of... very strong inside with, 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 into, into the market with the market. With this console. I have experience with that mixing board. I, I saw one flying out from a truck Poof. Yeah. to the floor, and we lifted up, put it on the on these support things, turn it on, and it worked. Nothing yeah. happened there. It's Very like solid. where, yeah. Very nice. Mm, this I remember. This was a concert in Berlin, in Germany. Uh, we do regularly uh, around twenty shows uh, around Germany every year uh, with mm. one of the singers I work with, Silla, uh, and they or. Mostly they are like sold out. Uh, this was very, very, very nice show in Berlin. In nice That's area. Great. Um, this is 
Bodrum Classical Festival. Uh, I was doing front of house monitors and multi track recording. That's why we have so many monitors around. So there. many screens. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see Pro Tools on the bottom right, right? Yeah. We. I was recording Pro Tools Studio One at the same time to two uh, computers. Uh, redundantly and then uh, using a cl5 for front of house and monitors and one of the screens is the ipad probably so, so i can go to stage and uh, play with the monitors from the ipad man that place look i don't know why maybe because we are weird sound engineers but i i tend to like the dark with a lot of screen places i i, I like think the, that is yeah. a comfortable place to be yeah i, I was about okay. to say that even though you have some lights around can you manage to work properly in that environment? Yes, it's it's actually uh, more lid than you than you uh, see it in the picture. You, you, I, I see everything mm. there. Uh, there, okay. there was no problem. And plus, uh, for emergencies, I have always my um, little lighter which I have on my head. You know, so if mm -hmm. something happens, I can switch it on. Well, we have to admit that uh, the uh, manufacturers of the uh, sound mixing consoles actually are taking that as an important thing very lately. Because I remember yeah. the previous consoles, they were very hard to see actually inside. Now they do care about like, yeah, seeing what beauty to touch is something important. Thank you guys. Yeah. Actually, the opposite is a more problematic. I mean, at night you see the consoles very well. At daytime, if you have the sun right behind you and it shines into the screen, then there's a problem, actually. Now, mm. the whole screen controlled mixers, <clears throat> they have a problem more uh, on, on daytime, I guess. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, this is Istanbul uh, Open Air Theater. It's a very classical area to have concerts. I was doing monitors for, I guess, Shebnam Ferah again. Uh, and the console was another Yamaha again. Ooh, I'm working a lot and that's Yamaha. a lot of microphones there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think those are in-ear monitor uh, oh, okay. tra transmitters. Uh, the whole <clears throat> band is using in-ear monitors in this thing. Uh, only the singer has additionally monitors on the stage as well. So they use in ears and monitors, so it's it's a lot of outputs. All right. That's another um, Yamaha. Yeah, this is another Yamaha. This is my fellow monitor engineer Sarhat. We we're working on probably trying to figure out how the Rio works again. Um, this must be Germany. I guess so. Yeah. I like that mixing console also. It's like yeah. uh, become yeah, 80 a percent of the time I'm using this one, I guess. Yeah, hmm. it's easier to get, you know. Like we were, uh, as you we were joking in Turkey around that, uh, you get a Yamaha CL5 faster than an ambulance in Turkey. <laughs> <If you need laughs> one. <laughs> like in one hour, you have a CL5 in front of you, and no, very, no, no problem where, wherever you are. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, then this is the only gig I did this year. Actually, it's a it's a live uh, stream from a concert. Is that orange back from you? Yes, it's my laptop's back. <laughs> and a nice color. I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, that's Izmir. Uh, good old days. Yeah, last last October, I guess this was uh, last year October. Yeah, uh, again, it's a concert. Um, we usually do like three days or four days in a row in this in this area. It's like four days sold out. Mm. Yeah. How is working in this kind of environment in this amphitheater? I really do not like too much amphitheaters, but this one is a good one actually. The angle is nice on here; you can control it easier. Uh, the sides are a little bit harder, as you can see. Uh, yeah, it's a big one. You have to have side fills. Uh, you have Definitely. to have uh, front fills and on the sides as well and it would be great if you have flying subs as well because uh at the mm, higher point yeah you definitely are, you have you are losing subs at the higher points but it's, true. It's, it's, it's a nice it's a nice area it's a nice arena this is again istanbul i was in front of us another cl5 I, man, I hello by yamaha <laughs> <laughs> yeah Mess. The lighting guy is at the back. The light lighting guy Mustafa. He's, hey. he's thinking they're taking his first. And yeah, the whole <laughs> band. <laughs> yes. Where's that? Do you remember this place? 
This is Valencia. Hey, one of the best cities, if not it's the best. The, come on, it's it's the best city. Come on. <laughs> the Shekular. Well, like the Shekular. The Shekular. Saul. Saul. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. Great, great band. And Perfect. just shout out to our friend Hassan, who was there uh, in the picture. He's a big, big, big friend of us. Very fan of the brand. Very special character. Very special guy. I love him to dead. He's like my bro. Yeah, he is like my bro. Um, so thank you very much, Alp. I'm very looking forward to see you in the future, near, near future. Let's fingers crossed that this whole thing will move on and we are going to be able actually to be together again as human beings. We need that. Yeah. Um, and especially if it's a, uh, why not, uh, as another seminar. We enjoy a lot going there and doing seminars and doing some you know, geek things and try to teach the people and learn from them also. It's very good. Um, I love uh, going to Turkey. I really like that country. We love you too. We're waiting. Come again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the same way as, as Joe. I hope that uh, Alp, you have enjoyed uh, our today's interview and I hope that the audience as well. And of course, uh, looking forward to see you soon and stay safe and stay cool. Y gracias. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Stay, say hi to everyone I know. from in, in, All from right. Me. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. I hope uh, you like the show. This is Sound and Soul. We will be back next month. Enjoy. Keep safe and take care of yourself. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye. Adios.